Alyssa from RomeWise, your go-to guide to Rome, coming to you today from Piazza della Repubblica to talk to you about visiting Rome in March. What the weather's like, what to pack, things to do, and what you can expect. Ready? Here we go. So what can you expect when you visit Rome in March? Well, remember that the first few weeks, the first three weeks or so, are actually winter and you can have really, really cold days. You can have rainy days. You can have beautiful, warm, blue sky days like today. By the time you get to the last week of March, you're pretty much gonna be getting into that spring weather where you're gonna have sunnier days. Well, if you visit the website, you'll see that I have a page dedicated to Rome in March. I also have an ebook all about Rome in March, which you can download. And I've got a video up about how to pack for Rome in winter. So since I said that March is a winter month, you should kind of prepare for winter-ish weather. But again, be flexible. So you're seeing me in a leather jacket, a scarf, always a scarf. In this moment, it is not raining, but March is a notoriously rainy month. So I also suggest bringing some kind of a waterproof shell, some waterproof shoes, and a travel umbrella. Weather-wise, I think March is a fabulous month to visit Rome because as I said, it can be chilly, but the great thing is you'll always be comfortable as long as you layer. This means you can visit sites like the Vatican and the catacombs, places where you have to dress appropriately so you'll have your knees and shoulders covered and you won't be too hot. Any time in March is actually probably a good month to start planning to eat outside. Maybe not always, but it's definitely a month where you're gonna find lots of things opening up to eat outside. And this includes some of the rooftop bars. They start opening up at the beginning of the season, they say, and that really includes sometime in March. Sort of just depends on the weather and what's going on. In March, we typically have the Rome Marathon at the end of March, sometimes it's the beginning of April. March is also a moment when there is sort of the end of Carnival, which is related to Easter. So you're gonna see some confetti in the streets. Those are actually called Coriandolo. But then we get into the March fried treats, which are for Father's Day, March 19th. Those fried treats are called Zeppole or Vigne di San Giuseppe, San Giuseppe, St. Joseph, the most famous father, I think. So those treats are really yummy. They are fried and filled with cream. <laughs> you start seeing them in Rome in March, but only in March, you won't see them after that. Tourism-wise, crowd-wise, I can tell you this from having run a bed and breakfast in Rome for nearly 20 years, March is also a funny month for tourism. Every year, it's a little different. The beginning of March is kind of quiet, but not really, and it's getting busier every year. But there is this moment somewhere in early March when all the schools start taking their breaks and we start seeing big school groups showing up in Rome. We start seeing buses parked everywhere and that's when we know the season is really beginning. So if you're coming to Rome in March, counting on a kind of a low season, you'll have to come in the very early part of March and even then, it's not guaranteed to be quiet. I get asked a lot, should I book things in advance if I'm coming to Rome in March? I think you should. March is that kind of month where the season is starting to kick off. And as I said, we're getting more and more people every year in March. The weekends are particularly busy. So if you're coming to Rome in March, even the early part of March, I do suggest booking things in advance. You'll have peace of mind and it'll just go that much more smoothly. Guys, if you're here on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, look what's behind me, the Colosseum. It's green. Uh, this happens actually for an initiative called Global Greening. It's not actually for St. Patrick's Day, but of course they make it coincide. Uh, coincide. So check it out. Isn't this beautiful? How often do you get to see the Colosseum all in green? Of course, one of the things you're going to see a lot of at springtime, depending on when Easter is, are these colombo, which are like shaped like doves, supposedly. They're typical Easter desserts. I'm here at the supermarket showing you, but you can get lots of different brands. You can get them with candied fruits. You can get them without. Similar to a panettone for Christmas, slightly different recipe and different shape, but this is what you're gonna see in supermarkets in springtime before Easter. March is also the very tail end of standard time. We're gonna be moving to daylight saving time right after the end of March. In Europe, we change the clocks forward 
uh, the last Saturday of the month of March. It's a funny month where it's a little confusing because you're getting these long days and yet it's really not that late yet. So monuments like the Colosseum, which seem like they should be open later, they're actually not because we're still in standard time. Once we get into April and those spring months, you're gonna start seeing night visits, later opening hours, etc. But March is this kind of funny moment between winter and the beginning of spring. Well guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video all about visiting Rome in March. Don't forget to check out the page on the website and download the ebook all about visiting Rome in March. Thanks again. Please hit the like button below and subscribe. See you at the next video. Ciao for now.